Hello everybody, I'm Overhaul and today we will be reviewing Fire Force chapter 249 I believe I can never remember the exact title number of the chapter but in the day it doesn't really matter the chapter's name is the trial of the night or some or not the trial to save the world yeah it's gonna be really hilarious what it's going to end up being the usual disclaimer in the beginning of the videos i am not a kid specific channel i do not aim at that demographic and although the context i do might look like they are for kids it's very likely I would either start talking about things that are not for kids, describing for things that are not kids, or just in general use the words that are not for kids. And since this is a Fire Force volume, which and the Fire Force manga has a lot more violence, gruesome, and or now imagery that's not really meant for kids, I would advise for children not to watch this video. As for everybody else, let's get into the, this review. So yeah, we start the chapter off with Vulcan and Merlin, well, Vulcan and Arthur coming to the, to the ape and I'm not sure if Arthur has like multiple p things he imagines or he's delusional in believing built some buildings are, but he calls the, the company it's Cathedral it's empty, as if there was an option that some was there. So, I'm not sure if that means that he thought this was a different location, he would have some people in, or if he did think it was the future, but just expected, I don't know, Licht or someone to come here. Which, you know, in retrospect, would make sense if someone like Licht would be there. Well, well if they technically, they, if you think about it, you could they could have taken Licht. Yeah, since again he can't really fight. Why is they in the battlefield again? No. During this beginning spot, Vol Vulcan is kinda you know being in between the whole fantasy and reality stage because the way he speaks is like very like dude, what are you talking about? This is obvious there's something else. Or something you know what actually it is. But he's playing as long as it with it, it just like if he was you know the whole pretending it's a sword thing. But anyways, they get to their whole big place, big place, which is pretty much just supposed to be Sh Shinra and Arthur's room, but often described it as the land of good and evil. Which Vulcan says, "Ah, oh, you're the good, and Shinra is the evil," which is even more funny once you consider what's actually about the cleaning things in the room which is gonna be hilarious but yeah Vulcan remembers how suddenly Shinra just disappeared it's kinda weird that he didn't mention ours but I guess it makes sense why he didn't mention ours and Arthur starts to have or does his kinda you know don't worry he'll come back speech where he's like uh don't worry evil always in the earth because you know he, he views Shinra as the word devil which is odd because at the end of the fight between the eighth golem thing, he's in like, oh, you're finally sh the uh, true hero, not something, which I don't get per se, but ah, uh, whatever. It's probably just supposed to be one of those things like you want to have a character develop, but you don't wanna, you know, you don't wanna have the character stop with a fine dynamic because it's so it's a fine dynamic like you don't want to change it it's the same thing as let's say in one piece Zoro and Sanji will have like a, this very big rivalry moment like maybe let's say the two have like the they have the two have like a together moment similar to what Zoro had in the third block against Kuma but this time it's both of them the hand in hand, but afterwards they would still have the same rivalry dynamic where they would install each other in that. So that's why it's basically is, is going. But yeah, they get into inside the room and Vulcan says, Well, oh, it's clear near than I expected. And Alpha says, Oh, it's because Shinnok cleans it. So in this realm of good and evil, the, the 
guy who's supposed to be the good literally says, Oh yeah, the devil, the evil, he's the one who actually cleans it, not me. <laughs> Which is funny. Honestly, I feel like this will pretty much just be used as comedy for the next couple of chapters because, well, the things that are going to be happening are going to be very serious and very emotional for a couple, bunch of characters. And probably even brutally, my fear versus the arrow theory is going to go. Uh, it, it's probably going to be months before it's going to happen, if it's going to happen. But, yeah, anyways. After a Roman just through stuff, and Vulcan says, What exactly are we look? Are you looking for? Because, you know, the world's kind of burning down. Like, he gets why he has to do this. Why is the benefit? Why it's going to be the good thing? But it is a bit like, Wait, what are you exactly looking for? There's not your, your room is literally like one of the last rooms that actually would have anything beneficial. But, yes, after the final falls off, and we see that what this final trial is going to be, it's gonna be a very non subtle ref reference to a popular video game series or, or the very popular console series with a name that's about so little. With the name of the game being having so little changes that you would think someone just had a misconception in, a be in the beginning because of either someone's way of speaking and saying it for the first time made him be a little bit confused, or there was just um, some smudge on the po on the post or something. A really unsettled reference, Akuro, but to be fair, I believe that's pretty much every time you reference something in the from real world. But yeah, the trial is a game called Dragon's Question, I believe, and well, Alpha is going to play it, and that's going to basically be not only just like a weird little f a way to have a trial that's going to be more comedic because let's be real here, you cannot have a knife trial in a world like Fire Force, but also to like have a little references to what's going to happen when in the real world. Which would be oddly similar, which does make me wonder if Okubo played the game and said, you know what, I should probably have the final battle be something like this, like these levels. But yeah, anyways, Alfred gets down, puts his company jacket down, and starts playing. And was like, if it's gonna take it to save the world, then I have to help and do whatever I can. And even does the whole like, it must have been fate, I was born to serve you. Which is hilarious, especially once you consider the two of basically just gonna be sitting in one room, playing video games, eating chips, pizza, soda, while well, people are literally dying outside and burning shit to the core with giant fire tornadoes or whatever. Yep. <laughs> Some may say it's a very big, alright, it's a very big, um, what we called, what's that thing that fire tail sucks in when it comes to fight, when they fight? A tonal difference, but to me, it fits the characters that were established, and it does make sense. So it makes sense. It's just one of those things like it's logical, but it is what the fuck. <laughs> so, but yeah. Anyways, so in the first boss or the first part of the game, I hit that I had a problem with was with a dragon that's just a copy of our previous dragon, like a sub. Poseido Dragon, I believe that his name is. I probably just cannot get around it. And then Vulcan says, I'm not that knowledgeable in the game, but couldn't you just... But couldn't you just use the magic or buffs from our people? And this is some... This is implying that Alpha was playing this game without even knowing how to fully play the game, which... As someone who is recently trying to play Opticlass deck and has absolutely no idea what half of the Opticlass cards do... I can relate. But yeah, anyways, I was like, oh, you're right. Magic boss would work. And Alpha says, give it to the main character and he'll be able to beat him. Which we transition then to the scene between the cap former captain of Company 4 versus his, the current captain, and Karin. Which should really just be Company 4 captain versus former and, and current battle each other because Karin doesn't really do much. Now, what Pan, I believe his name was, does is that he just buffs himself so much to a point that his veins are showing and popping basically. And he, and the former captain, I think, I believe 
Ogun or something jumps at him with his axes and gets into him. Now he puts so much buffs upon it that it doesn't like really go that into him. It's still bleeding, it's still a wound, but it's not like oh it got almost to a point that his arms would be cut off or head chopped off. It would just be like, yeah, you got in, but not anything too insanely deep. So he punch basically grabs the former captain's arms and breaks them. I guess one issue with being a pretty much an almost copy to paste human copy is you have bones. And the ends are broken and the axes fall off. Where at that point Pun just uh, I was kicks the former captain to once away and then goes into him and then punches him so hard that he goes through the chest. He actually did name it. I believe it was uh pyro no drill something. And it pretty much beats the former captain. Now, I actually thought this was going to be a little bit more of a difficult fight, like, this, that guy's supposed to be like one of the strongest, no ability-wise, humans, and now he's fighting his doppelganger. But, the thing is, he's not Obi. Like, Obi was constantly talked about how his strength is unnaturally compared to anyone. The point is, is yeah, we should really not underestimate him, like, he may not have an ability, but physicality, it's clearly on an ability level. Well, this El Captain was just, was never really, all I talk about how unnatural he is. Natural he is, how even this, uh, he fights with an axe, which is an actual weapon. Well, or he pretty much just fights with his fist most of the time. And his build. So I guess it makes sense. Not to mention, it is mostly just a straight up boot fight. And the fact that his arms were broken pretty quick early on also made it easier for attack. Now, I'm not saying the fight would have been more longer if that he didn't go for the immediate expose your arms thing. But I would say it would probably be a more even fight and probably not be just as quickly over as it was actually. But yeah. Guys, it is shocked to see how powerful Pan was, but honestly, I feel like we probably all could have predicted that he would be. After all, we're talking about a captain whose main thing is literally buffs. And I don't believe he was ever mentioned how, what his limit is, and honestly, probably was established in the Chinese Peninsula arc. It seemed like his buffs would have to be extremely powerful just in general. But yeah, the captain, the Alpha Gengar is defeated, and that's one down. As for how many others are gonna be, who knows. And also the villain in the game has also been defeated. So yeah, that's pretty much just going to be the thing now. We'll probably have a level next time it's probably gonna be Rekka and and Kari, and then we're probably going to get some like evil group in the in that game that will be supposed to represent the cataclysm force, and then we have captors facing off against them in the video game. Then I'm guessing and probably Rizzo will join them and Giovanni. Then we will have Dragon and Giovanni maybe show up because I just realized Giovanni and Dragon are one of the ones that have like a definite final battle and both of them are in the same location so maybe they'll join that way. But yeah, that's been, but that's pretty much or that's going to be for the next couple of chapters. It might get boring after a while, but you saying the fact that that's that quite a few chapters in the last couple of months it were basically just like dialogue and you know screenshots. I think it does make sense why we would have a couple of bunch of chapters focus on fights. Hell, we might even still get backstories on some of these chapters. I mean, it was backstory. I feel like it was gonna get a backstory personally. When she will be fighting against VA, so it makes sense. So probably also that be a bit of time. So I honestly don't have a problem. If we just been have a quick, just all right. There's this video game boss, all right? Video game boss. I know, that's gonna be referencing the real world fights. In one way, it'll be very quick. It's just that's what's going to happen. 
Chapter 2 have a chapter of fight. And so everyone is defeated except for Jordan Giovanni. When at that point they show up and they fight the, the Vulcan or for maybe even the ape. And as for the rest, I have no idea what will happen to the pillars. I have no idea. Probably the hope will come because, you know, the fiends are the most powerful villains. Or, or some, yeah, some of the most powerful villains. In front of people, probably to give people hope. I thought we don't really know how much hope does it need to cancel it out. But anyways, I hope you like this video. I hope you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos in the future. And with that said, I cannot wait to see all people next time. Bye.